Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're taking a fresh look at the impact of the pandemic on business activity. Conditions on the ground are evolving rapidly, and it's been some time since we've looked at the implications. We have major parts of Europe back in a full lockdown situation. I have two cousins in Milan who both contracted the disease in the past 10 days. One is doing well and the other one struggling. Since the start of November, COVID-19 cases in the U.S. have increased by more than 25%. We've hit record rates of infection in the U.S., even though we're not yet in the cooler weather across much of the country. The largest outbreaks are in Texas, California, and Florida, all of them southern states. According to the data reported by John Hopkins, new daily records were hit in Maine, Pennsylvania, Colorado, New Mexico, and Tennessee. Now, through the month of September and much of October, we saw infection rates increasing dramatically, but there wasn't a corresponding increase in the number of people in hospital or in COVID-related deaths. This gave a rise in a sense of complacency. We've been hearing that COVID is not that big a deal. Well, now, as of today, we have a record number of people in hospital in the U.S. as a result of COVID-19. Now, my two cousins in Milan, both who've contracted COVID-19, they're in their 60s. One of them has very mild symptoms, and my other cousin has pneumonia in one lung. He's been in and out of hospital over the past week. Italy has put severe restrictions on movement in order to try and reduce the spread of the disease. We're at the start of the season, and we can expect that infections and hospitalizations are going to increase dramatically. The headlines have been promoting the promising results from the latest vaccine trials. But as you know, vaccines only work for a single strain of a disease. Now, Denmark is home to 5.8 million people and 17 million mink. That's right, the little animals that they used to make fur coats out of. And it turns out that the coronavirus has made the leap from humans to mink. Now, in order to make the jump from humans to mink, the virus needed to mutate, which it did. The Danish government has confirmed that the new mutation of the disease has made the jump from mink back to humans, and there are 12 confirmed cases. The Danish government have imposed strict lockdowns on those people, including contact tracing, and the impact of a new large-scale outbreak of this mutation has not received wide news coverage. The potential for this mutation to render a vaccine useless cannot be overstated. The Danish government are taking steps to cull all of the mink on 207 farms out of the 1,000 farms in the country where the disease has been detected. We're talking about killing millions of animals. There's been debate on whether to cull the entire 17 million population of mink on all of the farms in Denmark. Now, in this day and age, I have no idea why there's a need for mink to be raised in such large quantities on farms. But the fact that they're considering this step tells me the Danish government recognized the seriousness of the situation. Strangely, the Danish government has not made any significant restrictions on flights leaving the country. Only a few countries have banned flights from Denmark. The UK have mandated the travelers from Denmark must self-isolate for 14 days. But we know the people cheat when it comes to that. Flights from Copenhagen to New York are still flying. Flights to Dubai are still scheduled. This is a moment when governments need to take a drastic step to prevent the spread of this dangerous mutation. So we have a situation where case counts are rising dramatically worldwide, hospitalizations are rising dramatically, and we now have a new mutation before an effective vaccine has even been deployed in any meaningful numbers. Will the vaccine be effective with this new mutation? We don't know. Will the mutation be more or less virulent than the current strain that's circulating the globe? We have no idea. Is the new strain more easily transmissible than the current strain? We don't know that either. All I can tell you is that this is a rapidly evolving situation. I know that I am continuing to take regular doses of vitamin D, and I continue to take precautions to limit social contact. The research shows statistically much better outcomes for those with high levels of vitamin D. And hopefully that's enough to protect myself and my family. But we also need to be concerned with the global picture from a virus that knows no borders. The only effective containment of the new mutation until we know more about it would be to cordon off Denmark for a period of time until we know more. Given that the stakes are so high for the global health of our population and for the global economy, 
It's astonishing to me that a strong decision has not been taken to restrict the spread of the disease from Denmark. So what does all this mean for you as a real estate investor or a business owner? It means the uncertainty we've experienced in 2020 is likely to continue for a while longer. You might have been planning for a period of increasing economic recovery starting now. Well, I'm here to tell you this may not happen. It's entirely possible we will see more severe lockdowns and outbreaks of the disease in the coming weeks and months. We've already established that COVID-19 was not just a blizzard that would melt away in a few days. It's already proven to be an entire winter, and you should be preparing your business for the possibility of a long economic winter. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.